Caitlin Clark last night finished up one of the most remarkable years of basketball playing up in uh, in quite some time because we could talk about her WNBA season and we will but her final season at Iowa was something to behold and she went right from that into the WNBA season I mean right away as soon as her college season ended just days later she was drafted by the Indiana Fever and I just remember being at the combine in early March that was the talk of the town in addition to what we were seeing out of the Pacers and the combine being there it's like Caitlin Clark's coming here the Big Ten um, tournament going down in Indianapolis for so many years. A lot of folks there in Indy had got a front row seat to see her with Iowa, and then she is drafted into the WNBA and is a savior of an Indiana Fever team that immediately goes 1-8. and eight. And it's just uh, one of those moments where you're like, welcome to the WNBA, Rook. And, yep. you know, ESPN are uh, showing the game last night in which the fever got swept by the uh, Connecticut Sun last night. They showed a montage of her year. And they showed a montage of her year when she passed Pistol Pete Maravich. She owns the record for most points scored in men's and women's Division One. And she set every record you possibly can set for Iowa, for women's basketball. She just absolutely did it all and became a, a magnet for attention and an, uh, an icon for sports fans, certainly little girls, certainly mine as well, playing her basketball and watching her play and and we, we saw the montage of her being drafted into the WNBA, and part of the montage was her um, succeeding in the WNBA. But they left out a couple pictures. And here's one of them. Her getting sent down to the ground, right down on the hardwood. Remember Kennedy Carter? Gave her a little bit of the business. Mm -hmm. And this was absolutely part and parcel of her year. She got cold shoulders and she got hot shoulders. She had to deal with all of that. And, you know, again, I'm sure there's small violins playing for people, for her, right? Because of who she is and how much attention she does get and there are so many great players that have been through the WNBA and are in the WNBA you know but here's another photograph that wasn't part of the montage that ESPN showed last night put it up that's her with Aaron Judge now I'm not sending this here because you know I'm, I'm putting this here because I'm a Yankee fan and this did, this did delight me but <laughs> You know why she was able to take this picture with Aaron Judge? She wasn't taken to Paris. Right. This was on August 10th. Instead of being with the Team USA in Paris, she had like a little summer vacation, like most of the rest of the WNBA. And there she was. Uh, where and, and and could you imagine if if Team USA had lost the gold medal game, which, as we all know, they came real close to doing. Just some shrug emoji moments that I think are part and parcel of what, whenever you talk about Caitlin Clark, I, I never thought that she'd be a lightning rod. There were also some weird moments where members of the media were asking her weird questions. She had to deal with that. But her accomplishments are something. Because at the end of the day, with her WNBA rookie season complete, let's see it. 
Most points by a point guard in a season in WNBA history. Most double doubles by a rookie guard in WNBA history. Most points by a rookie in WNBA history. Most assists by a rookie in the history of the WNBA. First WNBA rookie to record two triple doubles. First triple double by a rookie in WNBA history. First triple double in Fever history. The first player to be named WNBA Player of the Month and Rookie of the Month in the same month. First player in WNBA history with 20 or more points, 15 or more assists, and five or more rebounds in a game. And, oh, wait, there's a second board. She won Rookie of the Month four times, Eastern Conference Player of the Week three times. She set a single-season record for assists, period. Single-season rookie record for assists. That makes sense. Single-season rookie record for three-pointers. Single... Game record for assists, 19. She also became, oh, wait a minute, there's more. Uh, franchise record for most double-doubles, uh, three-pointers, uh, career 10 or more assists in a game. How about that franchise record for most career 10 or more assists in a game? Fastest WNBA player to reach 100 three-pointers. She did it in 34 games, most assists by a rookie in a WNBA All-Star game for which she received the most fan votes ever, 700,000 of those. Fastest player to reach 350 points and 150 assists to start a season, regardless of years in the league. Wow. That's not a rookie record. That's just a record for anybody. I, I, we, we could then say that this was on top of, and I could list all of her senior season records right. at oh, Iowa. All the Iowa stuff, yeah. One of the greatest years of basketball with work put in by anybody ever. You know, I mean, I understand it's about championships and rings and whatever, and she didn't come away with one in either level. I understand that. I get it. And this doesn't denigrate, you know, South Carolina's accomplishments or whoever wins the WNBA championship this year. I don't think it denigrates anybody. I, 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 and and I, I understand I'm not spending eight minutes to start a, an hour on the show about the greatness of other players in college or or the professional circuit. And I understand that people will say, pay more attention to the other folks. Pay more attention. Like, she couldn't do it herself. As I tweeted out last night, I thanked Caitlin Clark for the two-level, next-level basketball play of 2024. And I got back, you know, she didn't do it herself. And there were teammates. It's just, okay. Right. You know, LeBron has teammates. Jordan had teammates. I understand. Kobe had teammates. But she also did it with the spotlight on her at a very young age. Fame is hitting this young lady's life. And uh, very very rarely did I see a misstep or or something that I wouldn't want to show my daughter. Literally every step of the way, it's just like, watch her, watch how she plays, watch how she handles her business. By the way, first rookie in, in postseason WNBA history to have 25-5-5 five, and five in a game. She did that last night. They, seemed, they came so close to forcing a third game. But they're done, and this is what Caitlin Clark had to say. It sounds like she's out of gas. <laughs> you can kind of been imagine long, she would be. It's been a long year. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's been a long year. This is what she had to say. Yeah, it's definitely different for me. I feel like basketball has really consumed my life for a year. So I feel like it'll be good for me to kind of reflect back on everything that's happened. Like, I feel like I didn't even have time to really reflect on my college career because it ended so fast. And then I came here and was trying to give everything I could to, to this team and kind of move on and put all that behind me and help this team, you know, get back to the playoffs. So, um, I feel like taking some time to myself and really enjoying that and reflecting back and, you know, it was special. It was, there was a lot of things that this group accomplished that, you know, a lot of people probably didn't think was possible one to start the season and two after the start we had to the season. So, um, yeah, it'll, it'll definitely be probably a little weird for me over the course of the first couple of weeks. And then I'm sure I'll get bored and pick up a basketball again. So. Well, and, and hopefully, you know, everybody does um, continue to pay attention to the WNBA playoffs without her in it, you know, and hopefully it, there is a residual effect of of viewership because they deserve it. it. It's a fun watch, man. I, I'll tell you, this year, um, but was fortunate to take, you know, the fam to the Rose Bowl with Michigan and, and, and Alabama. Um 
and, you know, taking my kids to various other uh, events throughout the year. You know, went to a couple baseball games straight up with Coop. Going to go to Chiefs and Chargers later this week. Very fortunate to go with the kids. The reason why I'm bringing this all up is Susie and I were fortunate to take Taylor. You were there that night, Mike. Yeah. You had a front row seat, man. It was amazing. When L.A. versus Indiana in the downtown Hoops Dojo. And it was Caitlin Clark's first visit to Los Angeles. And she didn't have a very good night at all for the first three plus quarters. It's a lot of a lot of missed threes. Her teammates were turning it over when she was just hitting them in the hands with some remarkable passes. Yeah. But she wasn't playing crisp basketball. And then she made two threes at the end and they won it. Place went nuts. They went nuts. I think your friend uh, Ashton was there too, right there, center court, mm-hmm. right? Yep. You know, two very famous Iowans. <laughs> so, and the place was sold out. There wasn't a seat to be had. Wasn't a seat to be had in crypto. And Del Tufo is taking creepy pictures of oh, her. That's true. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's true, too. You know? That's true, too. Yeah, yeah. Call on the broadcast. No, no. Uh, kind of ruining the moment. You're you're right. All Everybody. around. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah for you're... the entire arena. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Mike. Amazing. Anyway, but you were just want to say that. <laughs> And 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 say again uh, on behalf of uh, girl dads, and on behalf of fans of basketball, and you know, a, again, it, it's such a, it's such a uh, an infused uh, lightning rod conversation for whatever reason. I, I I understand we're paying attention to somebody who got bounced in the playoffs. I get it, but the attention she brought to the sport, and the attention that she brought to a woman's league and a women's side, if you will, of the sport is just, I think, hopefully going to have a residual effect for years to come. Yeah, I think it can't be overstated enough, like what she did to bring eyes to that sport. Whether people want to admit it or not, it's it's just a fact. And so it's just, it's just cool, and hopefully it carries over and the rest of the playoff ratings you know, stay on par of what yeah. they were for her games because they deserve it too. But a lot of people were watching because of Caitlin Clark, and I, I think it's just it's okay to admit that. And what a year, right, for Iowa. Yeah. And all the records she set. We had we, we, we spread out her accomplishments over three graphics on the screen yeah, for the insane. WNBA. If we did her senior year, I had that list too. Uh, it it, it, w- it would have kept going. It would have been like credits of a movie. <laughs> and then she did what she did to the WNBA. And, you know... I still don't understand how she was left off the roster for the Olympics. I mean, that that is just nuts. Yep. It's going to age poorly nuts. and poorly with every passing year. Nuts. So, it's okay. She'll, she'll be there next time. Well, Los Angeles. Yep. And there won't be, I mean, that will be a line around a block. Uh, it will be the toughest ticket in town, I'm imagining. I would think so. Yeah. Of 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 a ta- of an Olympics and an event and a game that's going to have a lot of tough tickets, that's going to be the hardest one. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.